I wouldn't say it's the miracle tree or anything. I would say it's as close as you get. I eat every day. I will all day my skin. Nice. Just recently, Good Morning America called Moringa the top 2018 wellness trend. Moringa is really packed with nutritional density. It contains zinc, iron, vitamin C, calcium, magnesium, copper, and a lot of other elements that we need in our basic nutrition. It's also very unique in that it contains all of the essential amino acids. Well, Moringa leaves contain 27% protein by dry weight, and that's one of the highest of any non-legume plant. One of the reasons it's such a unique plant is that most fruits and vegetables are about 90 to 95 percent water. Moringa is only 80 percent. So when you dry it and remove most of that water, then you bump up all of those vitamins and nutrients. Kind of a spicy taste when you chew them. You get a little bit like arugula um, or wasabi. So a lot of people in the U.S. are, you know, claiming Moringa to be the next superfood and, and it's a bit ironic in that it's been eaten and consumed around the world for a long time. But I think transitioning into it being a healthy food in the U.S. is, is really just starting to emerge over the last few years. Kuli Kuli is the first company to really pioneer this green superfood called Moringa in the U.S. One of the big things for me that I wasn't sure of, to be honest, was like, you know, is Moringa sort of a, a niche product or will people buy it in stores that aren't just like natural food stores? So the market for Moringa has been growing at 85% year over year, so it's got an incredible growth rate. It can be used as livestock feed. The seeds of the plant have been used for water purification purposes. They have oil in them that can be used for biodiesel, for making cosmetics. And so there's just a plethora of things to investigate. And that's why it's been nice at UC Davis to be able to say, you know, there's been research with this. And so I can go to the engineering department and have them look at it or the plant genomics and say what varieties of Moringa are working best. And so it's really been able to kind of tap into all of those resources. It's got amazing properties and it grows really fast and it's just really applicable in terms of what are the best crops that we can be growing to feed people that fit the environment and the space and that are affordable and, um, and accessible to people.